Hey, everybody. Thanks for tuning in to The Unfiltered Gentleman. Greg here. You know, with everything that's going on in the world right now, it just felt really weird not saying something about what's happening. I think we've always done a fairly good job at keeping politics out of the show, and this one will be no different. This is not a political issue that's happening. It's a human issue. People need to stop needlessly losing their lives. I stand by the protesters and the movement. It's a very important one. And while I think the looters are being opportunistic and all around shitty, I don't believe that they're a part of the movement, and I hope their actions don't take away from this very real and important message. The killings need to stop, and black lives do matter. With that being said, on to the show with us being not funny on accident. More doctors smoke camels than any other cigarette. Hurry, hurry up. The variant is for your man and you too. What did you say? No boulder dash or baloney here. Cheers, everyone, and welcome to the Unfiltered Gentleman. And now, breaking the seal all over the finer things of life, Greg Scott and Dan. Welcome in, everybody, to the Unfiltered Gentleman. Thanks for listening. Thanks for joining. Thanks for drinking along. I am Greg. Over there is Scott. Maybe, maybe not. And uh, below him is Dick Shadow. Dick Shadow here, everybody. How's it going? <laughs> Oh, I'm glad we remembered that one from last week. That <laughs> was did. a good one. Yeah, good one, Scott. You almost, you saved me there. That's <laughs> right. My my this week's name for another week. Yeah, superhero Dick Shadow. That's right. Saving the world one dark shadow at a time. Defender of Dick. <laughs> As per usual. That's right. Uh, thanks all for listening. Thanks for joining. Uh, before I forget, because I've been forgetting so much lately. Burp of the week is banger. Okay. Banger. banger. Uh, bang newer. E R, all one word. Oh, Banger. Oh, oh, oh. We'll talk about that in booze news. Oh, man. And shout out. I think they were runners up last week. Shout out to Sydney, Australia. Man. Coming through, being our top listening city of wow. the week for last week. We are international, baby. We even made no the uh, the Apple Podcast food chart charts in Australia. What? Yeah, we're like top one hundred show or something food in Australia charts? in the food we're charts. Food? Yeah. We're, we're categorized under food because uh, unfunny drunks wasn't a category. <laughs> so, so here we are in the food category because they don't have beer or anything like that. So oh, uh, thank you to, to Sydney and to everyone out there that's yeah. listening along. Uh, some town in Indiana was a close second, but uh, it couldn't beat out Sydney. Wow. Thrown some shrimp town, eh? Yeah, some town. I cannot remember the name some of Some town, Indiana. <laughs> yeah. Sounds like a real name of a city from Indiana. <laughs> it probably <laughs> is, yeah. I think it is. I, I, I think there's a population 800, uh, some town, Indiana. That's right. So, uh, anyways, thank you all who are listening. Don't forget when you're on the grams, the hashtag show us your beers. Rate and subscribe us on uh, whatever podcast app you're listening to, whether it's Apple Podcasts, Spotify, whatever you got, Google Podcasts, we're on it. Don't forget to rate and subscribe. We got a lot to get to today. Once again, all three gentlemen are bringing in a beer to talk about. I hear Dan opening his right now. We got some crotch talk. We have uh, some interesting sports news to get to. Beer Babe of the Week, of course, and some uh, booze news to end things out. Uh, but I think we should crack right into it. Dan's looking very thirsty over there, so let's find out what he's drinking. Grab your libations, pals. It's time for Beer of the Week. And if you're drinking well, you know that you're my friend. And I say, I think I'll have myself a beer. So uh, I'm drinking a Slow Brew, uh, yeah. and it's the Mustang IPA. And, uh, you know, uh, I couldn't find anything on Untapped about it. Uh, that so happens. I, yeah, so I kind of have to just go off, uh, got to freestyle it, I guess. Uh, so, um, yeah, it's a, uh, we got the percentage here. Come on. We got it here somewhere. Seven point, on that yeah, 7.1% uh, alcohol. So it's uh, it's pretty, pretty strong. Um, yeah. And it's uh, real toasty. Um, let me get another sip over here real quick. Yeah, you lean into that beer, and I'm going to tell these guys. I, I just found it on their website. Uh, at 7.1%, like you said, 80 
teeth shattering IBUs. Uh, tasty notes from the brewery. They say citrusy, hot forward, and piney. It won a couple of GABF awards in 2000 and 2002. And they say, learned by brewing, our most award-winning beer is dedicated to the 100,000-plus alumni that have made slow brew an institution. Let the Mustang spirit run wild in this West Coast-style IPA. Yeehaw! Yeehaw. You're welcome for that. Thank you very much. That yeehaw at the end there. Yeah, and you, you did it better than I would have done. <laughs> so tell yeehaw. us about Mustang IPA. Oh, man. You know, um, God, this is like a Dan IPA over here. Oh, like, Yeah, yeah I'm like, IBUs. oh, my God. Like, I haven't had an IPA like this, I think, in a minute. And it's kind of like bringing back those old feelings I had yeah. for IPAs. And, oh, man, dude. Like, yeah, those IBUs are really kin- kicking in. It's uh, nice and dank, uh, real toasty malt flavor, and a uh, good, ni- nice uh, mouthfeel, too, I got to say. Yeah. Like, you know? It, it's been around for a hot minute. I mean, Slow Brew's been around since the 80s. I interviewed uh, their head brewer, Steve Curry, on the show about a year ago. And that, excuse me, Mustang IPA has been around for quite some time. It's just, it's, it's solid. You're looking for a West Coast IPA? Boom. Mustang IPA. Yeah. You know what I like about this one, too, is it got that 7.1%, which isn't one of our higher ones as far as like abv is concerned right. but like uh you can i kind of like to taste my alcohol a little bit and this one gives you that little kick that you're looking for so the warmth oh yeah definitely good stuff i'm really digging this one nicely done good pull where'd you uh where'd you score that from uh my local super supermarket oh nice yeah, talking the good stuff surprise those they have a like a taster so i'm gonna have like about three more of these puppies Nice. Coming up, yeah, oh, like man. like a multi pack kind of thing. Yeah, exactly. Nicely done. I like it. Uh, cool to see Slow Brew hitting the the grocery stores there. Yeah, no kidding. Yeah. All right. Uh, let's let's start talking about some things. Have a grievance to share? It's time for a crotch talk. I do have a grievance. This weekend, oh. I was supposed to be at the Firestone Walker Invitational Beer Festival. Oops. But instead, I was painting the goddamn house. Thank you very much, Rona. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah. You know, we got floor. I think I talked about this on the show. I think I bitched about it on the show a few months ago. We got our floors redone in the house. And part of that was you get new baseboards. Or as I'm being told by a lot of people that aren't in California, they call it trim. Hmm. Anyways, baseboards. Trim. Yeah. And they come. I said, trim is something very different. But anyways, <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, baseboards, they come unpainted, which, all right, fine. They're white. We wanted them white anyways. But uh, they're hard to clean if you don't paint them. And, and I tried to, like, clean some of the baseboard and just rub the fake finish right off. So I was like, all right, got to paint all this shit. And some were getting water damage in the bathroom. So we had to paint all the fucking baseboards throughout the house, which is such a pain in the ass because you're bent over or you're, you know, laying on the floor or whatever it is. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Took uh, two weekends or a weekend and a half, and we finished up over the weekend. So that was, uh, that was a pain in the ass. But doesn't sound fun. No, it was awful. I hate painting as it is, and this is like precise painting, mm. so it was like extra oh, shitty. Man. Yeah, but uh, I rewarded myself on Sunday. I for the first time in quite some time brewed a new beer. Oh, cool! Oh, wow! Yeah, so uh, a summer Kolsch is coming our way, and and maybe by the time it's ready, you guys will be able to come over and drink some. Yeah, maybe. I think we're approaching that time pretty I soon. I think. So. I think we're approaching it, and uh, as long as we don't have any, you know, curfews extended, because there's a lot of curfews going on right now, then I, yeah. I think we'll be able to come over and drink some beer, and uh, at least in the same building. I don't know about the same room, but uh, you know, Scott could be in the bathroom, and Dan could be in sure. one bedroom, and as I long as they got the beer, other. I don't care where I'm at. Yeah. Hey guys, how's your beer? <laughs> right. Yeah. So. Whoosh. Yeah. So uh, I don't know. Three weeks or so, that should be ready. Which might be right around uh, the fuck you, Rona. Let's hang out time. Yay. So there's that. Uh, and then I wanted to mention that I think it was like two weeks ago we talked about, hey, we should do a Zoom happy hour with the people out there. I'd gotten some people hitting us up saying we should do it. So uh, here we go. We're going to do it this week. If you guys are listening, today is June 2nd. This coming Saturday, I guess I could have pulled that date. So I had it handy instead of having to open a new program on my computer. June 6th, Saturday, June 6th. Zoom happy hour. Uh, we're going to 3 p.m. on the West Coast. I guess that makes it 6 p.m. on the East Coast. If you're in Sydney, I don't even know what fucking time that is. I'm sorry. <laughs> you have to do your own math. Your phone should tell you. Um, but anyways, if you want to join us, hit us up on any of our social medias or theunfiltredgentleman at gmail.com. Send out the link as it gets closer. And, and we're not doing anything special. I know some of these Zoom things that people are doing, they're like doing crazy drinking games or uh, 
you know, showing their schlongs or something. We're not doing any of that. We're just going to hang out. Uh, we'll talk about what we're drinking. Shoot speak the shit. for yourself. <laughs> well, <laughs> Dan may show a little schlong. But, That's right. Uh, <laughs> really? I'm not saying we don't want him to. I'm just saying uh, <laughs> it's not the main focus of the Zoom happy hour. It'd just be one of the added benefits. Mm. So, so, uh, what, so 3 o'clock, you said, right? 3 o'clock on the West Coast, if you're mm. in the States. That might be 8 o'clock in Sydney, Australia. <laughs> but don't hold oh. me to it. <laughs> eight o'clock a.m the next day uh, or p.m or oh geez yeah you're right you got which me eight o'clock it'd be i think 8 a.m it might be so it might be like 4 a.m first thing in the morning something all i know is uh, it's from here to the philippines it's 14 hours so give or take on hmm. that all i know is that the toilets in australia flush bit, the yeah. other direction that's all i got <laughs> they have so, toilets i hope so i'm oh, nice. told um, but yeah, so that's uh, that's coming up on Saturday. So join us, hit us up. We'll send you some links so you can join us because I think Zoom requires passwords now. That way, people stop showing porn, which I'm all for the porn. So, <laughs> yeah, um, whatever. We'll hang out, out with your wing out. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, Dan's getting ready. He's, he's, he's been moisturizing and everything. That's it's right. Great. So showtime. <laughs> yeah, I heard that's becoming quite a thing where people are hacking Zoom accounts and putting yeah. whatever they wanted to put on there while people were oh damn having their little talks. Yeah, hey, I'm I'm all for it. Somebody wants to hack <laughs> us and show some porn, like no one's gonna get offended. We're we're good with porn. <laughs> yeah, that's all I got, uh, Scott. Anything going on over there? Yeah, a couple things. Uh, the first one was it was kind of a for me it was a, like an uncomfortable situation at the retail establishment that I work at because I first of all mm. I didn't know that they sold these items. No, oh. and in fact, they're such a secret item that what what happens is I guess there's a picture of the package on the counter. The person brings it up to the cash register and says, I want to buy one of these. And then you have to go look behind the counter and give it to them. So what happened was uh, a young lady brought up a picture mm-hmm. of, let me just read the description here. I took a picture of it. Okay. Uh, Trojan vibrations, vibrating bullet. Oh. And so I'm like, I didn't know we <laughs> sold those, first of all, but let me look for it. So I'm yeah. looking and I couldn't find it. So then I ended up having to page the manager to come up and I said, hey, where are these? <laughs> And he's like, well, price well, checks on vibrators, please. <laughs> <laughs> and so the full time, the, you know, I'm waiting for this lady just to blow up and say, yeah, never mind. You know, she's been very cool about it. And so he looks around for a while and he's like, gee, I don't know. Let me check in the office. And my first thought, well, why would it be in the office? <laughs> oh, wait, no, I, never mind. I know why it would be in the Let office. me check my desk. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> so he's in there. He comes out and he's like, I didn't find it in there. Let me go check somewhere else. And the whole time, you know, this lady is just standing there just do-do-do-do-do-do-do. And I'm trying not to make eye contact with her because it's kind of a weird thing. And yeah. then finally he comes running out from the office and says, hey, I found it, I found it. And we sold the vibrating bullet to the lady and she is on her way. Well, I'm glad she, and then she have a left good the store. Evening. Yeah, well, I, <laughs> she didn't just go over to like did. the Hallmark aisle and <laughs> <laughs> go to town. This is kind of, I'm going to return this. And, <laughs> I, know, yeah, right? I want my money back. And then the other one was uh, yesterday. I went to so probably the best wedding I've ever been to. It didn't exist. Uh, yeah, well, it, what happened? I guess because of the way things are nowadays, it was a Facebook wedding. Oh so yeah. They're like, hey, put put it on Facebook and watch. I'm like, okay, well, you know. <laughs> For the most part, I'd say 90% of the wedding was froze because it kept freezing up. <laughs> so I just, whatever, I just set my phone down and just watched TV and drank beer. And so like you, may, the, you may now kiss the bride. It's like, a, it's like frozen. It's like, yeah. is he going to do it? Yeah. Kiss her, He's damn backing it. out. Yeah. Kiss her, kiss her. Kiss her. <laughs> so, now, yeah. could, could they, could the people there see who was watching or was it just you watching them? Um, I think on the bottom it showed the different people that were on the Facebook. I was just thing. wondering if you did like the ESPN sportcaster thing where you put a, like a suit on at the top and you had like no pants on. <laughs> oh, that, no, hell no. They, they oh, couldn't okay. see who it was. I mean, oh, they could okay. see you. They could just see your name. And it, there was no oh, return yeah. video or anything. Yeah. Your loser uncle has joined the thing. Did you, <laughs> did you write your name in as uh, Dick Shadow? Cause that'd be great. <laughs> <laughs> Dick uh, Shadow's here to watch you get married. <laughs> Oh, man. <laughs> it's a shadow hanging and then the over the bride is like, hey, I know him. So, whoa, wait yeah. a minute. <laughs> He's back again. <laughs> Everyone knows Dick Shadow. <laughs> <laughs> Who sounds remarkably like Joe. <laughs> oh, that time he did. You're right. Yeah, he did sound a lot like weird. Joe that time. So, uh, very nice. All right, Dan, how about you? Rona treating you well? Uh, yeah, I guess no complaints. Yeah, anything anything going on? Have you, have you hit up any breweries yet? 
No, I still have bars. But uh, no, no, I haven't. Uh, is I, I think it's been kind of tricky with uh, breweries. At least I think they've been kind of like uh, you have to like make like not reservations, but kind of let them know how many people are going to show right. up and stuff. I'm like, ah, man, it's too formal now. Like, just wanted to show up and have a beer. So I want to casually get hammered. You know not what I'm all saying? Sophisticated. That's shit. right. No yeah, I hear a lot of them. Me. Yeah, I hear a lot of them are doing reservations, and of course, you have to order a meal with your beer. You can't mm. just go get drunk. So. Boom. Yeah, it's uh, it's quite the situation. That part's gonna go on for a while. I think. Yeah, yeah. that's kind of. Yeah, a I was bummer. actually talking to a, a guy this morning who actually lives close to Dan, oh. uh, who went to a IHOP uh, Sunday, and he's like, you know, it's it's just so totally different. Like you know, those of you that have gone to IHOP where they have the pictures of of syrup on the table and all that. Oh yeah. You oh yeah. None of that anymore. You want syrup to bring you a little container of syrup, and you know, I mean, they'll keep bringing you containers of syrup as long as you want more syrup. You want salt and pepper? We'll bring you a little packet of salt and pepper. Everything's wrapped. Everything's, you know. How weird. Yeah. It's, it's you know what? I'm hop. okay with that. Because yeah? those syrup things have always been fucking disgusting. <laughs> like, have you ever touched anything stickier than an IHOP syrup jug thing? <laughs> like, they don't clean them. They, they get, like, their annual cleaning. Yeah. Unless you're there on day two. That thing is just covered in a year's worth of syrup. Yeah. So I'm okay with it. I, I'm behind that one. That's good. That That's a permanent gross. change. Yeah, it's disgusting. And you know they're not like, oh, this syrup's been here for three weeks. Let's dump it out. It's like every day they're just topping off more syrup. So there's like a little <laughs> bit of uh, last year's syrup, a little bit of today's syrup. Uh, there's nothing good about the syrup. That, and, and the fucking like fruit-flavored syrups, you know nobody uses that shit, so no. it sits there forever. Like who wants strawberry pancakes? And the one kid that comes in is like, oh, strawberry pancakes, and then probably dies the next day. Yeah, throws up <laughs> or later or something. Yeah, I'm all for that. That's that's a good change. There have been some good changes in all of this, and that's one of the good ones. I'm I'm for it. Way to go, I hop. Way to not yeah. be disgusting. Yeah, for nice once. Job. <laughs> for once, one and one time only. That's right. Uh, all right. Anything else before we uh, we start moving on? Mm, no. Good. Oh, Dan, how's uh, how's the car? Oh, uh, yeah, that's right. You know the DMV opened this week, so I have to. Oh, did see, they? Yeah, I got to see. Oh, wow. Well. But I think they're appointment only. So I'm you sure have to, you have to make an appointment and shit. So I'm like, oh my god, I'm probably not going to get in there till probably like two months from now. So I don't know. We'll right. see. What a bummer, We're going to find out next week that you'll be in there in uh, you know October I mean? 2021 to register Jesus your car. Christ, Christ, man, this is bananas. But I don't know. We'll see. It'll get done eventually. I hope. Uh, eventually, yeah. yeah. So have you have you been taking around the block at all, keeping it warm? No, like I'll, I'll start it, but yeah, that one time I cruised around with my dad, I was like, dude, like we could have got busted and like, too dicey. You know what I'm saying? Uh, it was too scary. It was fun, but it was too scary, man. I don't want to do you. it again. It makes sense. Uh, before Scott tells us about what he's drinking over there, uh, I figure I'll give you a little old timey word of the week. And this week's old timey word of the week is cup shot. Cup shot, and it's a word from 1593 for Ooh. drunk. Cup shot. Cup yeah, shot. hey I man, that was you're the a little former GM for the Lakers there for a second. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I hate that guy too. Uh, <laughs> yeah, Dan's looking a little cup shot over there. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> instead of just an old timey word, I, I felt like a, a good drunk word, and this one's from wow. 1593. So 1593. Yeah, that's a that's minute good. ago. Cup shot. I want to know like the origin of that. Like cup shot. I know. I was disappointed that there was no origin, or at least like country mm. of origin or something. Yeah. But uh, 1500s, yeah. cup shot. Not just a kid. A <laughs> right. <laughs> you weren't even legal to drinking age yet. <laughs> doesn't stop me. No, you were definitely cup shot. Um, <laughs> all right, let's, uh, let's find out what Scott's drinking over there. What you got? So what I got here, first of all, I'll just get over the bad news. Is there's a long description that I got to read. Um, <laughs> Uh-oh. But I'm drinking the Stone Enjoy by Unfiltered IPA 7420. A 9.4 ABV, 90 IBUs. Um, just for my own personal, man, it's pretty good. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's, you're just a good old IPA. And I, I was drinking it earlier, and I just some kind of a weird... I couldn't describe the taste, so finally, okay, I give up. I'll look at the description, <laughs> and, it's, and it was peach. I go, ah, that's what it uh, is. There's a little bit of peach in there. But yeah, uh, yeah it's pretty good. Uh, anyway, uh, the details are a Nugget Super Galena Simcoe Delta. I feel like I'm like 
it's Peyton Star Manning Trek or something. Yeah, Peyton Manning <laughs> giving signals there. Yeah. Um, oh my! No, that Super Galena, Simcoe, Delta, Target, Amar- Amarillo or Camarillo, whatever we how we yeah. look at it. Uh, Cascade Galaxy, Citra, Nelson Sauvin, Moteca, Motica. and Helga Hops. Yeah, all that. There you go. And now to the English part. Uh, for this version of Stone enjoyed by IPA, we thought we don't always have a filter, so why should our beer? By skipping a step and letting this devastatingly fresh, golden hued double IPA go unfiltered, the beer takes on a hazy appearance, and it's peach. There's the peach right there. There it is. My mystery fruit. Uh, and tropical fruit hop aroma are intensified. So though it may be, may, so though it may sound like it, this mess, misstep, wow, <laughs> was no misstep. I <laughs> say that five times. Yeah. Uh, like <laughs> that we just did. Like the other IPAs in this series, this version is brewed specifically not to last. So yeah, it's good stuff. Nice. You can find it yeah. somewhere around where you're living. Uh, grab it up. It's pretty good stuff. The 704s are always good. I believe it was uh, two years ago when they fucked up and accidentally did not filter like half the batch on the East Coast. And we reached out to our friend, uh, it's the beer girl, and she sent us the unfiltered one and we had the filtered one because that's what they made on the West Coast. We did all your science with that. Oh, the My good own. old days. That's yes, right. indeed. Thank you, Scott. <laughs> You're the hero that we waited for, Scott. We won't ever forget, Scott. There it is. <laughs> yes. Thank you, Scott. I can never hear that enough. <laughs> uh, all right, before I talk about what I'm drinking, let's do a little bit of sports. And now, the sports. Brought to you by cleaninguptheglass.com. Whether it's the Baltimore Chop... For the one-two punch, it's time for sports. It is indeed. A few things going on uh, that have been uh, motivated or, I I guess, influenced by the the situation in the world. First, Floyd Money Mayweather is doing a nice thing. He's writing an $88,500 check to pay for four separate uh, funeral services for George Floyd, the man that was murdered in Minneapolis. Oh, wow. He even, he even posted a picture of the check with his name and the money on it. So he's, he sent that off to the family. There's no word yet if the family is going to accept the money, but he felt it was the right thing to do. Apparently somebody in Floyd's, uh, <laughs> I should specify, Floyd Mayweather's camp is friends with somebody in George Floyd's family. So he, he felt like he needed to do that. Very nice thing. Okay. That's cool. Also, J.R. Smith. This is going to be good. I can't wait. Yeah. J.R. Smith uh, caught somebody who was breaking into his car, one of the looters during all oh of Oh, my God. And he posted about it on social media, if it'll play. One of these little motherfucking white boys <laughs> didn't know where he was going and broke my fucking window in my truck. Broke my shit. This wasn't no resi- This is a residential area. This wasn't no stores over here. No, none of that shit. Broke my window. I chased him down and whooped his ass. <laughs> So if the footage come out and y'all see it, I chased him down and whooped his ass. He broke my window. This ain't no hate crime. I ain't got no problem with no with nobody. Ain't got no problem with me. It's a problem with the mother system. That's it. The mother broke my window and I whooped his ass. He didn't know who window he broke, and he got his ass whooped. And he beat his ass. I mean, <laughs> it was great. There's a video of it on the on the Twitter. And it's him. He gets like two really good, like stone cold stomps in there. Oh, wow. <laughs> like just stomps a mud hole in his ass and walks it dry. And then as the kid tries to like walk off, he gets a nice little right hand in there and punches Oof. him. That's too bad. Like he didn't have like a bottle of Hennessy and he could have just like waved it in front of him, like the T Rex from Jurassic Park with the flare <laughs> and just like threw it and ran the other way, you know, because he would have probably chased it. Oh, dear. <laughs> But uh, I'm all for it. Beat that kid's ass. Don't yeah, be breaking no people's windows in their truck. Come on, man. Was that that kid yelling in the background? <laughs> in the background ah! That was taken at his house. The I, I wish I could hear the, the kid getting beat up. Yeah, no kidding. Good. Raiders, Dan's Raiders, mm-hmm. and their new Allegiant Stadium mm-hmm. is under the wire. They're supposed to be ready to go by July 31st, and they're looking like they're not going to make their deadline. Uh-oh. Oh, well. Yeah. Um, I will say uh, they'll probably do a better job of getting that uh, stadium prepared than Oakland did, so not, not a big deal. <laughs> Bar's not, not set too high. Yeah, right? I don't think they'll yeah. have to wait like 20, 30 years for that thing <laughs> to get built, so I think they'll be okay. 
<laughs> yeah. Plus, I'm sure there'll there'll be some sort of forgivances since uh, right. You know, Corona yeah. and all that. So. Old time sake, say how to put like uh three the uh, four bases out there, just so I can plan another baseball field for a little <laughs> bit. One last time, man. Just have like a little dirt out in the corner. Oh my god, that was ridiculous. <laughs> it's ridiculous. It's amazing Janikowski had any kind of kicking records kicking off a of dirt. Like it's unbelievable. Right? Unbelievable. That is true. When you think about it. Mm-hmm. Um, playing for the Chargers, mm-hmm. according to Melvin Gordon, prepped him for playing with no fans. Ouch. He says <laughs> he's Who now on Denver. <laughs> Melvin Gordon. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Eckler's back. Uh, backup. I oh, him. Yeah. oh, take that. Yeah. Now he's in Denver, and of course the season will most likely be played without any fans whatsoever. And he's just saying uh, he's ready to go. He's done he's this ready. before. Yeah. <laughs> he he went on to talk about that all the fans that would come to the L.A. home games for the Chargers were always the other team's fans, which was pretty apparent. Pretty accurate. Yeah. Yeah. No surprise there. Yeah. And Nothing. it was for the Rams too the first few years. <laughs> I'm about to say nothing really changed though from San Diego to Los Angeles. I mean, we give LA the bad rap, but San Diego carried it over. I mean, come on. Right. Well, I'll say I was at the very last home game for the San Diego Chargers before they moved up, and they were playing the Chiefs, mm-hmm. and it was uh, it's at least fifty fifty Chiefs. It's not if not a little more. Oh yeah, yeah. I went to the Raider game one time when they were in uh, San Diego. And it was all Raider fans. And like like I said, they were on defense. And the Raider player's like putting his hands up, like, get louder, get louder. It's like, dude, you're not at home. Like, you shouldn't be able to do that. Like, and I think we- everybody that comes in the Charger Stadium is at home. <laughs> it was crazy. It was something yeah. else. That's something about LA. Like, just the area is we had no teams for so long that everyone else is already like another team fan. So, yeah. if the Raiders or whatever down in San Diego, it's a nice little hop, skip, jump, and you get down there, and, and all mm-hmm. of a sudden, uh, that Chargers game is a home game because. Tickets were dirt cheap, let me tell you. Yeah, that's true. Dirt yeah, cheap. I could co-sign that. Mm-hmm. Uh, on to baseball. MLB owners are now, you know, we talked about how they were going to do this prorated salary thing. And they went, no, 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 we don't want to do that anymore. We want to do a, a profit sharing. Well, now they're willing to pay the full prorated salaries of their players with a shorter season, which means they get less money. Oh, they wow. want to move it down to like 50 games. They were talking more like around the 80 game kind of NBA season mark oh yeah now they want to knock it down to 50 if it's gonna be that big a deal man just cancel the season yeah 50 games yeah. That, what is that like uh a tenth of the season right there like <laughs> i think know? so damn that's, might as well not even play yeah it's yeah. nothing it's really not so mm-hmm. we'll see uh and the nba is discussing different options for their potential july 31st return they're, they're trying to come back by the end of july which uh would be great because the the Lakers need to win their championship that they were on the on the road to winning. They were going to do it, man, and 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 I've heard about that too. And I've also heard that um, they've been kicking around ideas about how they want to do the playoffs, like as early as this year. Like, I mean, right? right like, you know what I mean? Like, can you imagine like playing the season, think you're going to go into the playoffs a certain way. It's like, no, we're going to fucking change everything. Like, oh shit! Like, what the fuck? Yeah. But um, just so everyone knows, uh, cleaning up the glass dot com. Is gonna have a new article Whoa. next week, and I'm gonna Ooh. I'm gonna do my idea what I think the playoffs should oh, be. I've heard a lot oh, of other yeah. ideas being kicked around, and I think I got the right answer. So I'm gonna I'm gonna post that. You heard it here first. Finally, That's right. I got something to live for. <laughs> well, let me tell you the four options they're weighing, mm-hmm. and uh, I can't wait to find out what you're thinking. But mm-hmm. Commissioner Dan always is always right. Thank you. So here. Here's option one. 16 teams. This format would jump directly into the postseason by locking the current standings into place. Doing so would minimize the risk of spreading the infection by limiting the number of teams that are in that bubble, uh, but would exclude a number of teams in the Western Conference that had a legitimate chance to reach playoffs before the coronavirus shutdown. The next option is 20 teams. The league brings four extra teams, and they're going to do this at the Disney World, uh, Wide World of Sports Complex. Um, So if the league brings four extra teams to Disney, it would likely be uh, to hold a World Cup-style group stage. The format would see five groups based on regular season records open the playoffs. Each team would play each other twice with either the top two teams advancing to the final eight or the top four doing so at the second group stage. The four non-playoff teams to be invited in all likelihood would be the four teams on the Western Conference bubble, which is the Pelicans, Trailblazers, Kings, and Spurs. Option three, 22 teams. Bringing six extra teams to Orlando would open the door for a play-in tournament. According to ESPN's Ramona Shelburne, the style being discussed would be, uh, would include all teams within six games of a playoff spot. 
That would be Pelicans, Blazers, Kings, Spurs, Suns, and Wizards. If the number, if the two number eight seeds in each conference were included as well, the NBA could build a simple eight team bracket with either a single elimination format or short series. Um, and it goes on from there. And then the final option, 30 teams. If the NBA brought the entire league to Orlando, it would mean holding a 72 game regular season before holding a play in tournament. The advantage of doing this would be getting each team beyond 70 games as this is critical uh, for local TV deals. Right. So, yeah, I mean, uh, they should have something where they're able to play back into shape, I think, because, uh, yeah, like I said, the Lakers, like you had mentioned too, the Lake, we all know the Lakers were going to fucking win it. They were rolling. They beat the bucks. They beat the Clippers. Like they were going to do it, man. And then just to have that all come crashing to a, like a, a screeching halt and saying, okay, everyone go off and running again. Like it's hard to get that momentum again. So yeah. I mean, they they need at least 10 games or something just to get back into some game shape. Yeah, no matter what, even if they go with, like, you know, just the playoffs, just the 16 teams, they still mm-hmm. need to do you know, whatever it is, 10 games or, or a little mini preseason or something. Because mm-hmm. you're right. The good news out of all this is Anthony Davis and LeBron were, you know, kind of showing their age and their fragility a little bit there mm-hmm. and uh, give them a little time to rest up before the championships. That's true. So I think uh, we'll sign see. that. Yeah, so I am I'm hopeful that they really do return by the 31st of July. That'd be a nice little birthday present for me. Hell yeah. Yeah. Well, so. But the way the way that they're going right now, it's going to be like, yay, we won the championship. Okay, guys, tomorrow's the first game of the next season, so get ready to go. I mean, they're they're almost to the point where they're they're waiting too long as well to do but something. But I could see I could see that if, you know, you started in July, it'd probably take you at least all the way through August, if not into September. And the preseason normally starts in October. I say at that point, cancel the preseason. Regular season starts in November. I think you're fine. Yeah, you could do that. I mean, mm-hmm. camp usually starts around August, but then yeah, the preseason games they go they go into October and all that. But yeah, I had heard that they were thinking about starting it in Christmas, and then like even yeah. like after that season ends, like you know, stretch it back a little more, and then eventually it'll get back to when it's supposed to start. But, yeah, have yeah. maybe an abbreviated season for the yeah. next season, and mm-hmm. then hopefully. We'll have a normal lifestyle by then. <laughs> no matter what they do, I just hope they don't do that bullshit where they're making teams play like three games in a row and that kind of stuff. Oh, yeah. That's or, ridiculous. Or, yeah. Or three games in four or, or two, you know, it, back to back. It's just, it's unnecessary, especially right now with the regular season. Whenever they had teams doing back to backs, it's like, why? You're just asking for injury at that point. Yeah. And then that, yeah, yeah that one year they were doing back to back to backs. So it was like, God damn, right, man, yeah. that's bananas. Isn't that one of the years Kobe blew his Achilles? Oops. Ooh. Maybe. At, I think at least won. I guess I from what I understand they're going to be in one area. So there's not going to be any traveling. So Right. Mm-hmm. It's you all going to be done in Orlando at Disney's Wide World of Sports Complex, which I've been to. It's it's quite the uh fantastic sports complex for all sports, not just basketball, but oh, wow. Um yeah, it makes sense because there's also a ton of Disney World hot- hotels there that I'm sure are very underutilized at this <laughs> point. So I I yeah. think it makes total sense you guys keep everybody in one area. There's no traveling, there's no flying. Yeah. They're only mingling with each other. I think it it makes total sense. My buddy had went to Disney World during like the height of the coronavirus. Oh shit. He said that he is his family felt like the Griswolds out there, dude. Like there was nobody there, man. Like it was just Had them. his BB gun out. You know what I mean? They're they're on the rides with like the workers and everything. It was like nobody there. It was ridiculous. <laughs> that's awesome. That's the way to do it. Yeah. Um, all right, that's all I got. Uh you guys want to hear about another beer? Let's let's do a yeah, little let's more drinking. Speaking of the NBA. jamming out for a little bit there (laughs) well since you guys went hoppy i thought you know i'm gonna go in the complete opposite direction Mm. and so tonight i am drinking john hans rainbow cookie imperial stout and this comes from destination unknown beer company i'm showing everybody the uh fancy can art there it's a nice looking can we like these cans here it's kind of cool i like Uh, it Anyways, this is 11%. and has a 3.9 on untapped. From the brewery, they say a rainbow cookie imperial stout with almond, raspberry, chocolate, and vanilla. From the sinister mind of John Fern... I don't know what that says. A holiday oh, favorite yeah. turned into liquid gold. 
And I got this uh, by way of Tavor, the uh, the beer shipping company Tavor. I got this a couple months ago. And, you know, you guys were going IPA, and I was like, what, what can I find? What's in the back of the fridge that I haven't hit in a while? And I, I found this bad boy. It's all the way in the back of the fridge. It's fine. It's a stout. They last forever. And I was like, I haven't talked about this, and it's got a great-looking can. I wonder what it tastes like. And so uh, so here we are. I'm going to take my first little sippy sip. Yeah, I really like that can, man. You got all those bright colors against like the dark you know, background. Like, oh, my God. I, I, that's a nice can. <laughs> well, always bringing those nice cans. That's right. <laughs> um, whew, this is... Um, a little dangerous. It hides its 11% very well. A lot wow. of cherry and almond on the nose. Uh, kind of amaretto-ish. Mm. And the flavor, you get the cherry, especially as it's starting to warm up here. You get the cherry. It almost tastes like the inside of a Fig Newton bar. You know what I'm oh. saying? And it's got that Fig Newton bar sweetness, like very fig-ish with like a lot of sugar on it. Interesting. Mm-hmm. How do you, um, do you dig in it? I'm... Not not digging it. It's okay. interesting. Uh, the the finish, like after you let it sit in your mouth for a minute, like you've swallowed, and uh, it just lingers there. You get more of that cherry coming in, and uh, I'm not always the biggest cherry fan. This is. I'm going in for one more. Okay. Um, is it, you got like a nice dose of that alcohol in there to kind of balance out the fruit. Yes and no. The alcohol is pretty muted. It's not mm. real warm. Um, yeah, it's a lot of a lot of cherry. As it finishes, almost in like a Dr. Peppery kind of way. Oh, okay, good. Not like a medicine sort of. No, way. no, 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 no. God good. no, because I would be spitting all over the computer right now. <laughs> oh, okay. I can't. I can't do that shit. I like the Dr. Pepper. That, that'll roll. <laughs> yeah, this is. Um, I don't want to say it's a bad beer because it's totally not. They, they, I think achieved what they wanted. I think it's a little sweet for my liking. Um, for what you would expect from a stout. Yeah, well, right? you know, sometimes you get those sweet stouts, but this is sweet in like a sugar coating your teeth kind of way interesting and i don't know it's not a bad beer at all i, I don't want to sound like i'm i'm just shitting all over this beer because i'm not <laughs> it's uh it's super interesting i'm glad i got to try it and maybe if i had ever had a rainbow cookie in my life i'd, I'd know what i was right. really in for at that point so boo on me but uh <laughs> this is my first from these guys and i look it's good it's it's a sipper it's something you want to sit down with on a on a nice Sunday evening and just just chill and hang outside on your patio or something. Um, it, it's not bad at all. I, I know I kind of talked it down a little bit, but uh, it's very interesting. I recommend it in the sense that it's a very interesting beer. I don't think I've ever had one that's been brewed with almonds before. Um, chocolate, raspberry, and almonds. Yeah, and I got a lot of cherry, like I said. So yeah, it was different. It was different. I'm glad I got to try it. So I'm sure you could appreciate the craft. That- in it at least like brewed with almonds yeah. and everything like you're like hey that's that's pretty daring i think they nailed what they were going for mm. and I, a lot of times that's what counts so right because not everybody has the same palate for things mm-hmm. so but uh all right well uh, that's what i'm drinking let's let's class things up a little bit over here yeah this one's a classy dame with a great palate it's beer babe of the week it is indeed. Her name is Mila, and you can find her on the grams at Sip with Mila. All one word, no spaces, dots, dashes. Scott like has it. a chance over there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Sip with Mila on the gram. She's a beer lover, a wine connoisseur, and a spirits enthusiast. I want to be friends with her. Very she lovely likes- hair too. She does have very nice hair, actually. Yep. Yes. So uh, I I suggest you all give her a follow on the gram. I think you'll be glad you did. All right, moving on. Uh, We've got some booze news to get to before we uh, round things out here. So let's talk about the news. Extra, extra, drink all about it. It's time for booze news. It is indeed. Uh, Off-premise beer sales top $1 billion leading into the Memorial Day holiday weekend that we had a couple weeks ago. So leading up to that weekend... Beer sales off premise had not reached a billion dollars. The closest they got was the week before at nine hundred sixty four point three million dollars. But uh, leading into the holiday weekend, people said it's time to get fucked up. That's right. Yes, they topped a billion. You gotta have something with that barbecue, you know. Oh yeah, and nobody wants saying? water with barbecue. That's right. Yeah, that should be against the law. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, some good news amongst all this Rona situation. Mm? According to the Brewers Association, they conducted a survey and they found that more than 80% of craft breweries that applied for the PPP, Paycheck Protection Program, 
uh, the loans have received their loans and that uh, the outlook amongst the brewery is much or amongst the industry is much better as far as survival. Uh, when this all started, I think there was a poll that said about like 40% or 46% expect to be out of business within three months. And, and that's starting to turn now that people have gotten their payroll loans and, and people are starting to come back and, and buy and drink some beer. That's good. Yeah. Cause that's, um, you know, that was kind of a thing. Like I think some breweries weren't even going to like try you know what i mean like off premise like selling yeah. outside pick up nothing they're like all right we're just closing i was like dude like there's still an opportunity to make some money here yeah you know? well and, and and when it first happened it was like well what do we do we can't yeah. do anything laws mm-hmm. had to change and, oh hey you can deliver beer now and right so yeah it became it's, a little easier more accessible that's right yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's 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 been cool to see how we've like kind of bent to keep everybody like afloat yeah, exactly. It's a nice thing to see because a lot of times the government works at the speed of government, and this <laughs> yeah. time, you know, with like breweries and bars and stuff, they they kind of realize that they needed to step up a little bit, and they can't just say, "Hey, close your shit and and bye bye, <laughs> so, bye bye, <laughs> bye Felicia." <laughs> so uh, it was nice that they actually did something in a timely manner, and they did, and and it seems to be working out. And and the cool thing, at least out here in California, excuse me, as breweries start to reopen to uh, you know letting the public in and sit and drink. Um, they're still doing their online ordering and their delivery and whatever programs they had in place. So it's it's really nice. Look, you don't want to go in. You 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 still want to get your shit delivered, or or even if you do want to go in, but you're drunk and you want to get your shit delivered, uh, <laughs> they got you covered. It's it's been working out. Yep. Another nice thing, Wiley Roots Brewing, which is out in Colorado, raised fifty five hundred dollars for the local community for uh, COVID related issues uh, with a hard seltzer that they released called Howl yeah. at the Moon. Howl at the Moon. Howl at the Moon. Oh, wow. Interesting. Very nice thing. Yeah, very nice thing they're doing over there. Yeah, good for them. Yeah. Departed Souls Brewing, which is in Jersey City. It's my favorite story of the night, and this is where the burp board comes from. Has released a beer called Trash Can Banger IPA. Oh, shit. (laughs) In honor of those fucking cheaters. That's right. The Houston Asterix. The Houston Astros. The Houston (laughs) Cheaters. I've been, after all this came out, I spell Astros with an extra S, you know, Astros. So many times that my phone autocorrects Astros to Astros <laughs> Oh, now. man. I love it. It's it's learned. It's just like whenever I try to type in drink, it autocorrects to drunk. Yeah. Now it, now it also does it for Astros. My phone would do that too. Like one time I was like, I don't even remember using this word. And somebody had asked me like, hey, uh, how are you doing? I'm like, yeah, I'm feeling D. And then it said drunktastic. I'm like, I guess. Yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> it's like I never know I use that word, but I guess I have. If only it had autocorrected to Dick Shadow. <laughs> Dick Shadow. Oh, man. There you go. I'm oh, feeling man. Dick Shadow right now. That's right. Dick Shadow and, should talk a little Batman-ish. You know, like, I am Dick Shadow. Dick Shadow. People have to see the cans, too. The, the cans are exact replica of the Astros uniforms. Yeah, they, they oh, uh, wow. designed them after their logos. Yeah, know? it's so good. And then my conspiracy theory is, because I'm like Jesse Ventura, is it's actually the Astros that started the COVID nineteen? No, just so they cancel the season. <laughs> they get the uh, the focus off of them. Damn. Yeah, they won't think about us. We won't have pictures thrown at our heads and people booing right. us. Yeah, it's just yeah. <laughs> I they was might. gonna get tickets to the uh, Angels game where the Astros are coming into town. I was gonna boo Ooh. the shit out of them. Yeah, yeah right. Gonna, the opening series is gonna be Angels and Astros. And, mm-hmm. Yeah, they're yeah. they're in cahoots with China right now. I think <laughs> you know. <laughs> Just trying to get everybody off their backs. Like, yeah, hey, forget yeah. about the protesters. And then yeah. like the Astros, like, hey, we forget about us. and All this other shit going on. And forget right. about the Astros. Uh-huh. Yeah. Listen here, gorilla. That's my <laughs> really bad Jesse impression. It sounded more like Kane on a one of those talking sticks. He kind of did, yeah. <laughs> I could, let me just throw in this, because you just reminded me, last either last week or the week before, um, I watched uh, WrestleMania 3 because I'm able to watch wwe stuff on one of the channels it's not on the wwe network just because they're trying to promote it i guess anyway and, WrestleMania 3, and it was jesse ventura and gorilla announcing the the uh, wrestlemania it was so awesome <laughs> <laughs> listen here gorilla it was yeah it was great compared to the announcers today is like wow these oh, guys well. are great yeah anyway. i'm uh if we're gonna talk wrestling i'm a much bigger fan of the aew crew when it comes I, to uh, announcing oh yeah i heard they had a really bad pay-per-view recently. i didn't see the pay-per-view i'm sure somebody hey, scott probably knows scott. The i didn't see oh, it um it. it depends on who you talk to okay i mean okay. 
Tyson you know, was it, there. It, it was a challenging thing because you know there's no audience. What I, what they're doing that I like is they have other wrestlers that are not involved in the show and their families sit yeah. in the audience and like you know yell and scream and you know okay. talk shit and whatever. So it's what I said from the start. Like WWE should have the heels on one side, the faces on the other side. They boo, they cheer, whatever it is. Every now and then there's a little skirmish or something, or you know, if you get tossed outside the ring, maybe someone gets in a cheap shot. Like it, it provides for so much extra action and it's so much better yeah. than just a completely empty arena. AEW definitely handled they it. They do. And what yeah. other um not to get this on to a wrestling thing, but Too late. what other the smaller uh, wrestling promotions are doing is they'll take a certain one of their wrestlers, one of their star wrestlers, and just kind of show his highlights of his career, which mm. is like you know pretty interesting too. Yeah. Finally, my last thought on this is Raw. There's no audience. Cut it down to from three hours to at least to two. Yeah. <laughs> it's just so annoying with the three hours and no audience. <laughs> Even if there is an audience, please cut it down. Yeah. Anyway, so three uh, hours is too long, man. Yeah, it's it way is, too long. Man. Too long for anything. It is. It's it's too much. I I stopped watching Raw because Smack. If I was gonna watch one of the two, I watched SmackDown because three hours is too much. That's crazy. But yeah, AEW. I I like AEW. I watched them over WWE. I haven't watched WWE in, in months. In fact, the last WWE thing I saw was Stone Cold Day on March sixteenth. That was it. <laughs> last thing I saw. Um, that's pretty much it. I did want to wrap it up with one story out of Minnesota, uh, and this is from Modest Brewing. They, of course, are in the thick of the protesting that's going down out there, and they I just had to share that they did a great thing. They posted a sign outside the brewery. It says, free hot dogs for protesters, also available. Water, first aid. Very nice thing to do. And then in very small print under first aid, it says, we can't advertise that. We'll give you beer, but just ask. Oh, wow. So... <laughs> That's I thought that was cool, great, especially yeah. given the times right now. You know that they're right. kind of probably hurting a little bit, but to kind of just give back, that's pretty cool. Yeah, it's a very nice thing. I I liked that, and I liked the uh, we can't advertise it, but just come on internet. <laughs> so I thought that was pretty good too. So good on you, Modest Brewing, and everyone else out there that's doing a good thing when times are not easy to do good things. So right on. Uh, with that, we'll hit some music. I'll tell you all to find us at theunfilteredgentleman.com on the social medias at the unfiltered gentleman, except for Twitter at unfiltered gents. Of course, you can drunk dial us 805 538 beer 2337. Uh, I think that's all the ways to find us. The unfiltered gentleman at Gmail is if you want to email us. And hey, don't forget this Saturday, if you want to join the Zoom happy hour, send us a message somewhere and uh, we'll get you the link and all that good stuff to join us and, and have a beer with us and whatever else we're going to do. Dick Shadow uh, will be there. <laughs> <laughs> and he will probably show himself. That's right. Um, so, so thank you all for listening. <laughs> <laughs> you mean Scott with a question mark? Yeah. If it really is Scott, <laughs> Scott. So, anyways, thank you all uh, for listening, for joining. Hope you're all staying safe and very well hydrated. And on that note, good night, everybody. 